Vahibi Mei Eish Kodesh. When did this begin? Some 24 years ago. Through a series of events that are hard to explain, and I really believe that it was Ruach HaKodesh, that there was divine inspiration, that this all came about. There was a great tzaddik who I loved very much. He's no longer here. And he had a thought that Woodmere would be an ideal place to open up a new type of a base medrash with a chassidish flavor. And he suggested it to me. Out of nowhere, I was teaching, and I was never interested in being a, a rav. I'm not particularly interested in being that even now. I am. But that's not what I was interested in. I was in the classroom. I was a rabbi. But he felt that, that the neighborhood was ready for such a thing. We would never have thought, if you would have told us 30 years ago, that we would end up in Woodmere. We considered Woodmere to be a midbar. A wasteland. A wasteland. But when the idea came up, we just felt that it was that it was the right thing to do, and it was, it was going to be something very, very worthwhile. The shul was founded in December of 92, and I went to a Friday night davening, which was in the library uh, of the academy. I'll never forget the first Friday night in the shul. I decided at the end of davening, this was also not anything that was planned. Most of what's happened here was never planned. I was so excited about what was happening. I grabbed, I grabbed the guy next to me, I grabbed his hand, and I began to sing and to do a dance around the makeshift bima. He looked at me like there was something wrong. Why would uh, a Jew grab another Jew's hand uh, after diving on a Friday night, except the right hand to give good Shabbos, but this was the left hand. And that first Friday night, everybody was very uncomfortable with that dance. Around five minutes into it, it picked up speed. And that's already 23 years ago. The dance has gotten stronger. The dance has gotten more beautiful. People heard about the shul because at that time, that kind of davening just didn't exist in the neighborhood. By the second Shabbos, the third Shabbos, we didn't have room. People were pushing to get into the dance. We davened Kabbalat Shabbat, and the singing was amazing, and the house would be shaking. The house was shaking because there would be 80, 90, 100 men packed in, plus however many women came, and we were bouncing as, as we were singing. Because Jews want to dance. Jews want to serve Hashem with simcha, with joy. And that's what the shul is, is about, that's what it's always been about, and that's what it's about now. At the beginning, I, I remember struggling with what the name of the shul would be, and I actually found last year um, I found a piece of paper where I wrote down like 50 different possibilities of names. And then all of a sudden I wrote across the whole page a huge thing, Eish Kodesh, Holy Fire. I had been studying this, this swarm of that Rebbe of the Holy Tzaddik, Rebbe Kalanimus Kalanimus from Pisetzna. And uh, the swarm spoke to me and Svarim, not just because of what he had to say, but who he was and how he was saying it and when he was saying it and where he was saying it, hiding in a bunker as Warsaw was falling apart, to pick up the pieces of lives that were shattered. And... <clears throat> the Eish Kodesh spoke to that and still speaks to that. And those who, those who would venture into the world of his writings, I think would understand a lot more what we're talking about. Everything here is the Eish Kodesh. The mural that's on the wall when you walk in is a depiction of what was destroyed. And my determination, my wife's determination has been to do our best to try to rebuild something. Now rebuilding, obviously, we're not trying to model over, try to model something that was in the shtetl. We understand that this is Woodmere in the 21st century. And at the same time, there's a fire that over the years, that light has grown somewhat dim in many places. The only way that the fire can come stronger and stronger is through Torah and Tefillah. Okay. It's the way I start my day is coming to shul. It's, it's my lifeline. We have a halacha chabura from six to seven. 
and then the Tanya shear from 7 to 7.40. And it charges you in terms of going into your day, being able to take on anything. <laughs> Up. I mean, I didn't know what Shabbos was until I was 23, 24 years old. Since moving in, I mean, I've made it an effort to make sure to be at every one of Rebbe's shirim, the Hasidic shir, to come on Friday mornings for his Rav Cook shir, all of his Hashkafah shirs, weekly that he gives on Shabbos or on Motzi Shabbos. My grandfather, Zichonoi Vachab, was here in 2005, and he asked me to come with him to shul because I used to help him get here. I wasn't living the life yet, that was in a different place, but I would come here in jeans and, you know, in a shirt, and I would come with him, and the building would rock. Um, during Lechadodi, and it was like, you know, as soon as I walk in the door, people would, would, would give me their seat. It was always like an incredible feeling. And Le'at Le'at, you know, as life progressed and I became a Baal Tshuva, and just every single time I heard a Dvar Torah from, from Rebbe, it was just like mind-blowing. My good friend Shalom Yona called me once, I'll never forget, I was in Pittsburgh for Shabbos doing an NCS one Shabbat to me. So Shalom Yona's telling me, you gotta see Rav Weinberg, you gotta see Rav Weinberg, you gotta see Rav Weinberg. And I was like, hey, you know, set me up. So. For the next year, on Thursday nights, I would go to the shear that Ravonica was giving. That was just, it was a killer. It was unbelievable. But my whole last year of law school, what we did was, our Seder was Thursday night Ravonica, followed by Friday morning Ravonica, Shachris, 8 o'clock Ravonica, and that's how we rolled into Shabbos. I was uh, still living in Chile in the late 90s, and uh, it was the early days of the internet, and I searched for Eish Kodesh, looking for the safer and the first thing that turned up was the website for the shul. Uh, we were thinking about moving to New York at the time, and I started looking into it, and uh, they were actually starting to dig the hole for this building at the time, and the pictures were up there. And they talked about Roy Weinberger, and there were a couple of shirim there, and I listened to the shirim, and I was completely taken by them. I had no idea at the time that I would ever end up here. <laughs> One of the most memorable moments of the shul was when construction began on, the, uh, on, the new, on this building, on the new building. And one of the chevre, Harry Karowitz, had a great idea that we would make this into a special day and, and we would have the kids wear t-shirts that we printed up for them, the Eish Kodesh bricklaying, you know, and the date, and all of the kids in the shul, each one took, it, uh, took a moment to, to put in one of the bricks of the foundation of the building. And, the diversity of the children and where they come from in the schools, all the different yeshivas are represented here. And we're proud. And these kids are now, the next generation, are now in groups together and playing together, going to high school together, getting married. And, and there's no greater nachos. My wife and I joined Eish Kodesh about 15 years ago. It's an opportunity for us to come and feel elevated feel like we're not just doing what we have to out of rote, but we're doing it because we want to get closer and to connect to God. People don't look at my husband so much as Rabbi Weinberger. They look to him as Rebbe. Rebbe of my life, I've chosen you as a person who can help me grow. It's, a, it's an affectionate name. It's not just Rabbi, it's not stiff. My husband tries to create a, a warm relationship. People sometimes ask me, what was your husband like when you, when you met him? Did you ever think that you'll be a Rebetzin? Did you want to marry a rabbi? And the truth of the matter is, I didn't even know he could open his mouth. First time I came home, I told my, my sister, he's really nice, but he's too quiet for me. But along the way, we realized that uh, this guy could talk and that he had some, some talent. The shirim I love. There are very, very few shirim of Rabbi Weinberger's that I miss. I've been involved in, in publicizing his shirim since 93. We bought the first tape machine and we sold thousands upon thousands upon thousands of audio cassettes and CDs out of the basement of the house. And I think in 2005, we went completely digital. We've had hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of Rabbi Weinberger's shirim downloaded. <laughs> The impact that Weinberger has on the larger Jewish world is so much bigger than we think. He is the person that I go to with any kind of question that I have, not only about halach, with any question that I have about life and about chinuch and about my children and about myself and about anything. I still get goosebumps 
You know, when the Rebbe speaks. When I first met him, I realized what a Gadol Batora, a Gadol Bimidos, someone who understands people, families, whether it be learning Nigla, learning Nister. I realized in every area he was an expert and was someone who I wanted to come close to and learn from. Why are you your faith? But this is a fascinating toast. Rabbi Levin's been a great addition to the shul this year also. Uh, he's been with the shul for a while, giving the daf yomi, but now that his official position has uh, become assistant rabbi, and he's taking on the morning chaburs and the morning shiurim, as well as Thursday night and Sunday morning and the other shiurim that he gives, it's been a terrific addition to the shul. Ish Goresh is such a wonderful, warm place to be in. And the warmth of the Rav and the Rebetzin is really something very special. There are three three pillars, three legs of the shul. The Rav, so Lima HaTorah, and the third part is Yom Naraim Davening, which uh, at this point in my life it would be hard to imagine davening anywhere else. nowhere else. I sit in the back of the shul and, and I'm not engrossed in davening, just watching newcomers and people who haven't been here before and their reaction to what goes on and the euphoria on their face, it's just amazing. 27 hours of davening doesn't end with everybody rushing out the door to get something to eat. It, it ends with people dancing and singing together for 20 minutes, a half hour. first night that I came for Mincha Kabbalah Shabbos, I just was mesmerized. Did people know we were coming and they were putting on a special performance? I also feel like everyone was very, very welcoming. We were invited out every Shabbos from the first second we moved in. We have four kids and they come to shul every Shabbos. And there's so many kids, so everyone has friends here their age. I love it. Some of them go to groups, they have many friends here, and they're very comfortable, and they love all the extra programs that they offer in the shul. We have a, a world-class youth director here in Rabbi Yitzi Haver, who's just uh, terrific with the kids, and he's been a great addition to the shul. And that comes from a person's rut zone. You can go to Rabbi Tzomai Berger's class on Tuesdays. She's amazing. I do the chesed meals for the shul with some of the girls, and I have to call her regarding, you know, this family and how to proceed with, you know, meals for this person, and she's very special. The women have taken to my wife, and she's always made herself one of the gals. It was never the rabbits, and she doesn't go by that name of the women. She goes by her name. Women nowadays, they're modern, they're sophisticated, they're educated, and they need a Torah that speaks to them in that fashion. They need something that's in sync with what's going on outside today. Eish Kodesh just means beautiful people, beautiful Rebbe. We sit here every week, we just take this for granted, and you realize just how much we have. You will find every type of Jew. You'll find strimals, you'll find kippasrugas. You have different ages. Jeans and t-shirts, black hats. You have guys that grew up religious, you have guys that probably tshuva. And everyone is dancing together and they're singing together. And it just, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see. It's like a, it's a great challenge. When everybody comes together, it's just magical. <laughs> It's really for us, Eish Kodesh has been, has been home. It's a place where we feel comfortable. We feel comfortable with the people. We feel comfortable with the, the hashkafa. We feel comfortable. It, it's just nice. It's always nice to go home. The, the way of Hasid is always to finish the learning with a nigan. Why? Because through the simcha and through the emotion that that nigan brings with it, the learning is imprinted in your heart. Since I was never in this to be a rav or a rabbi. As I said at the beginning, I was never interested in such a position. But I was very, very interested. I'm still driven to strengthening our chavra. And it is a diverse chavra. And to see them learning together and dancing together, 
and now to see the next generation. One boy with long face, and there'd be another boy with a with a yarmulke, with a uh, with a Yankee uh, emblem on the yarmulke. Uh, maybe even a Mets emblem, I prefer not, but with a Yankee emblem on the yarmulke, and, and that they're together, and they don't see that there's any difference. They, they they're part of Eish Kodesh. Do you see how I'm crying? Do, 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 do I look like I'm? Do I look like I'm crying? I ain't crying. Ain't happening. <laughs> it's not happening. How'd you get to be president? What happened there? I have no idea. I mean, for me, uh, I, I honestly have no idea. I, I honestly have no idea. I remember the first date that we went on. I, I took his wallet and I, I was looking inside. Wait a minute, you were looking through your date's wallet? <laughs> How does that work? There was no money or credit cards in those days. <laughs> anyway. She still goes to the well. <laughs> Shabbos Kodesh Shabbos